Welcome back, peeps, to Perfect Dev, where we give you cats the freshest dose of dev snacks. Now with your amazing hosts, Alex Patterson and Brittany Postma. This episode brought to you by Storyblock. Build anything and publish everywhere. Welcome back, Perfect Peeps. Hey, hey. Brittany might have to do a lot more driving, as you can tell. I am <laughs> remote today and like with crazy headphones and in a crazy room, so um, <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of weird. And we're still playing around with like how we want to handle our Twitch stream going out through Streamyard and all that fun stuff. So, with all of that said, we have Ace with us today to talk about Code Sandbox. What's up, Ace? Hello. Thank you for having me. As as you can tell, he does have a real first name. Do you want to introduce yourself <laughs> fully and kind of like how you got started with Code Sandbox? Oh yeah, uh, definitely. My name is Adewale Abati, um, but I came up with like Ace when I was in I invested. Um, so it's basically like a an inspirational choice of name where I wanted to choose a name that would describe what I wanted to be and how I wanted to be recognized. So it's like you know what um, I do like pretty good coding, but I know I can be better. So I want to be the best. And I also want to be recognized as the best. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to prophesy <laughs> into myself. Like, you know what? You're ace. You have to be ace no matter what you do. So uh, it was almost like a motivational choice of name for me. Uh, I started in Nautical when I was in university. So from there, I studied um, computer science. Um, then went on to become a backend engineer, front-end engineer, full-stack engineer. Um, before discovering developer advocacy, just because of how the community works in my side of the world, yeah. I live in Lagos, Nigeria, and technology, the ecosystem here is driven a lot by community. Uh, so one way or the other, I find myself being involved in community stuff, and I just discovered myself in dev advocacy, even before I knew what developer relations was. Uh, so from there, I mean, I used to use Cold Sandbox. I found a job posting on Twitter, and I was like, I'm a big fan of the web, and Cold Sandbox has found a way to you know, shape the future of the web, but they're they are right, working right in that space where whatever they do can have an impact on how developers everywhere could, you know, build for the web. And it was a developer advocacy role. So it was more like, this is like the best of both worlds. Let me apply. And that I basically changed uh, everything from there. So, yeah. That's really awesome. I have two things for you. I love that first part yeah. about speaking your own future, like about building <laughs> yourself up and, not worrying about what you get from it, but good things coming to you because of that. And then two, yeah. do you know what developer relations is now? Because <laughs> I feel like everyone has a different, like, everyone has a different description, and we no, none of us understand it. We're just all here. <laughs> I think I think the best way to describe what developer relations is is to know that yes, everybody has a lot of definitions for it. Developer relations is something that everybody has a lot of definitions for, and yes. it's all of it, right? So once you just have that at the back of your mind, it kind of makes things easier. Uh, is it evangelism? Is it marketing? Is it just a uh, community? Is it something mm -hmm. else? So I think it's yeah. a lot and everything in between. It's marketing for developers, being in the community, getting that whole like developer experience back to the company that you're working for so that you can improve and get better yeah. on it. Yeah, I agree. All right, so you're working for Code Sandbox now. So do you want to start telling us a little bit about what Code Sandbox is, how you got involved there, how you started there? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know if anyone in the audience has heard about Code Sandbox before, uh, but it's, in short, like very simple terms, it's a way for you to start building as quickly as possible. Um, we started out as an open source project where Ives, as our founder, wanted to just build an environment where he could share his React project as easily as possible. You know, collaborate with colleagues, mm -hmm. start with sandboxes, be able to replicate bugs as easily as possible. Uh, and from there, as, as a project that grew in the community, it just started getting uh, bigger and bigger. And today, we recently just announced um, Cosambo's project uh, in Open Beta. And what, open, what project does it? It takes the approach that we use for sandboxes to a bigger level. So now you can build like full scale applications and also share them as easily as possible. One of my favorite things about projects is the fact that whether you're contributing to open source or you're working on a private project, every branch that you're trying to contribute to has its own URL. So you can make a change and send a URL to somebody and they can literally preview it just like that, like on the spot, like all oh, these changes you've made, this is what's happening. And I feel like that makes a lot of 
impact on how quickly people can collaborate and share stuff. And that's exactly. personally my favorite thing. Uh, but today we are able to like, you know, have teams build you know, large scale projects. Uh, from my from experience, when I was when I just joined Code Sandbox, I had conversations about Excalibur, starting off on Code Sandbox as a sandbox. Uh, but from there, because it got so big and you know we couldn't fully support on being run on a Code Sandbox on a sandbox itself, they now run very well on projects. Right, it's, it's easy to run projects on uh, on projects, and it's, it's amazing so far. Uh, we just announced the open beta, so anyone can literally try it right now. That is incredible. Do you mind if we we backtrack a minute off of Code Sandbox? Yeah. Like I, I'm yeah, so definitely. curious about like uh, Nigeria and like how your like meetups are, and I feel like the dev space over there is just ballooning. Like it's just growing oh, yeah. like crazy. Um, what's what's that been like for you? Yeah, um, I think it's it's been an amazing journey because for me, my career basically started out uh, in the community. Uh, my very first internship, I sent out a tweet. I like your company. I'd like to work here. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's amazing. I, I know, right? Um, I started the internship, and from there, I went back to school. Um, and I started, I became a Microsoft Student Partner. Uh, and that was my first insight into what community was generally. Uh, we started being on a community in my university. But coming out of school and getting back to Lagos, where um, I didn't know a lot of people, where I could find Slack groups. I could find, uh, I think Slack was more dominant at that time, even, before, even beyond uh, Discord. So we had Slack groups that were very community driven that started supporting people. Or oh, are you building stuff? Let's highlight this. Um, do you need help? Let's support each other. So the way community has grown in Nigeria is the fact that because um, a lot of people have learned from the community, have grown as a result of the community, they are somehow. Did we just lose audio? No, we're, we're good. Uh, I, I think somehow. Oh, uh... there we go. Right. I think, my I think mic, we're good. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I eat my USB for the mic and it just disconnected for a second. Um, but yeah, um, I was saying like a lot of people today actually grew up or developed their career as a part of the community. So as they grew, they also found a way to give back to the community, which is like 10x uh, the growth rate that it would normally be. So today we have like tons of communities. We went from having meetups where 10, 20 people show up to actually having conferences that 2,000 people show up. Yeah, um, we started incredible. having conferences like Concatenate, Open Source Africa, where not only local speakers, like people that live here in Lagos, but also people from Ghana, Kenya, Rwanda, other African countries that are growing. And also the like, United States, Europe, uh, speakers from there that fly over to Lagos uh, or just join remotely. So the, the community has grown so much. Uh, and I'm glad, like, I'm so excited I'm a part of, I've been a part of it, like, observing different chapters from 10 people attending the meetup to 2,000 people attending the conference here in Lagos. It's It's been mind-blowing. That's, That's incredible to be a part of all of that growth yeah. and see how it happened. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. For you and the, the university side, um, so you said like you had like an internship that you kind of tweeted and magically got. <laughs> um, yeah. It, it was, is there any form of that built into university for you too, where like they they partner with like other tech firms to get you internships, or what did what did like if we were talking to someone over there right now, what is your tips for them? Um, unfortunately, no, they're not di directly built into the um, universities. But a big difference from then to now is the fact that the communities are so accessible these days that while you're in university, you can figure out what communities are in your state. Um, that's if you have like 36 states in Nigeria, for example, or what communities are around you. And you can start to take advantage of these communities while you're still in school. Wow. Uh, so for me, Twitter made it very accessible to find people that were very active at that time, and which is why I was able to send out a tweet uh, through Twitter to the company <laughs> I wanted to work for. Yeah, but today we have like, um, a few years ago, actually, Worked at a company called Ingressive, where GitHub wanted to like break into the space, wanted to you know support more developers here in Lagos, and I basically managed the entire program, the developer relations program there. Uh, so what we did was we built communities across schools in Nigeria, in every state in Nigeria. So at some point we had ambassadors that were organizing technical meetups in all of the schools. So that created like an avenue for students that probably did not have access initially to also have an idea of what is possible. And GitHub is not the only one doing that. We have, we have like Facebook um, developer groups. We have Google developer groups that also build presence in, in schools, 
um, outside of the university structure itself, but like just going through the community to build this structure has had an impact on how people can integrate themselves into the community. And when they leave the school, they have this mindset of community. So the best way I, I try to describe our ecosystem right now is that it's very community driven. And wow. one way or the other, things that you do has an impact on the community and the community and vice versa, basically. I feel like that is going to be so much more successful in the long run. Whereas in the States, um, you, you tend to like go to college and you're so desperate to get your first job. You kind of <laughs> yeah. like you might have even been part of a student group, but that all fizzles away and like just falls off for people and they have to like rebuild all of those relationships all over yeah. again. So that's that's a really incredible story and a powerful story to keep community together. I love it. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> Um, we, I was, I was listening to, uh, Anthony's podcast earlier and we were just talking about, or they were talking about, sorry, as if I was there, <laughs> um, <laughs> they, they were talking about, um, how being on a different time zone and away from, uh, kind of the U S and they were saying, um, Christopher was saying that he feels as though a lot of the development is so focused around the United States and the time zones and like the English language and all of that. Is that something that you have found that you, that you struggle through or I, it sounds like somebody's giving a shout out. I think there's a horn. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure actually, because thankfully thanks to tech, um, there are also um, communities that are developed in Europe. And Europe is a very similar mm -hmm. time zone to us here in Lagos. Um, okay. So we're able to, I think, for opportunities to interact, uh, we're able to find a balance with that. And also, like, early time in the U.S., it's almost like in the evening, like, after work here in yeah. Lagos. Uh, so for the, I would assume, like, I never really had that issue. So I, I can't, like, categorically speak. But based on time zones, uh, we've been able to, like, collaborate with you know, European companies, European communities, and, and, and collaborate that way. So, yeah. It's interesting. That was on FS Jam that you're talking about. And Chris is in London, right? Or in the UK. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm the interested that he thought that because I feel like we're in a box here in America and we only <laughs> see the things that we see. Because I agree. <laughs> I, I've heard that there's lots of Svelte communities in Europe. There's more than there are here in America. So like for Svelte, it's the total opposite. But I feel like we just get in that little Euro or American box. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was in Seattle for like the last five weeks and I tried to find a community around to maybe like attend an event and I couldn't. Um, I checked on meetup.com and I couldn't find any. So yeah. I would say maybe some states thrive uh, on community, but I would assume like it's probably more growth happening right now in other countries, like especially in Europe and Africa as well, maybe more than the US because it could have been like the US has reached the peak uh, where more people are, you know, VC funding money yeah. uh, and less community than it used to be. Uh, yeah. That's an assumption. That's unfortunate. I, th <laughs> I think we've had a lot of meet offs, a ton of them die off during the pandemic too. So like even oh, yeah. tonight, I'm I, why I'm uh, remote right now is I'm going to a Google developer group in the middle of my state in Michigan. Um, and we're trying to like put these things back together just now and it's just so such a struggle i was just telling Brittany earlier to get people in person is like yeah. the hardest thing right now and like people don't want to do virtual they have like zoom fatigue or whatever fatigue we want to call it and so it's it's again it's an amazing story that like you have such strong communities that you're able to go to it oh, yeah. is, yeah. We're seeing that with Jamstack meetups too at work with Netlify. They're trying to get Jamstack meetups going, but the one they want the ones that are already active, and there's just there's not a lot that are still active. Yeah. So it's just it's sad. Hopefully, we can bring them back. Yeah, I think a few. I think a few still happens in Lagos. Um, I know Gift Egwenu. I don't know if you yes. know her. Uh, yep. Used to add one uh, yeah, in Lagos, so that was, that used to be pretty cool too. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so I think what Christopher was mentioning was that when you hear like big names, so like I used to work with Mishko who invented Angular and like Kent C. Dodds maybe is big enough. I don't know. Like yeah. those, <laughs> those, those type of names you hear, uh, he was kind of saying like, those are not things that they see over there. And it's like, okay, well, like help me understand that more. Is it, is it just a name thing that's the struggle or is it the tech that's a struggle? And I'm curious from your standpoint, do you have your own like 
popular people over there and again we're just stuck in our little box and don't see it <laughs> oh yeah we we definitely do have our popular people over here um and the amazing part of it is that they're not just popular locally uh they also have been able to make an impact globally uh we have people like <laughs> prosper or um he i think he used to be a gde for web technologies uh, we have Iwea Devin Okun. She is currently a GDE for web technologies. Nice. Uh, we have Christian Mwamba, who actually spared one of the biggest conferences that we had, um, Concatenate and uh, For Loop, uh, along with Prosper. He currently works at AWS. He was previously at Microsoft. Uh, so there's been like a ton of growth. Wow. Uh, nice. And I think my favorite part of the growth was, especially when I started out, um, there wasn't a direct path to how you say this is how my you know, career could go where it's like, okay, I get out of school, I go to school, um, I find a job, sit down behind a desk, just code away, right? Um, but because of all the things that happen in the community, you're able to see someone be a software developer and then transition to develop advocacy. And then after a while, they get a job abroad, they relocate, um, some people stay, work remotely. Like, because of the community, we're able to open like different path uh, that people can identify, oh, this is how I want my career to go. We start having yeah. more people yeah, engage and discuss these conversations. You should celebrate people, like you said, uh, and you observe them from a distance. And even though you're not interacting with them directly, they are kind of a mentor yeah. to you because they're like, oh, this person started this community, collaborated with this set of people, then got a job here and then moved to this thing. Like, oh, it is possible, right? And yeah. because of that, that presence, it's a ton more people are uh, working remotely today from Nigeria than I have ever heard of. <laughs> um, so it's very impressive, personally. And you also like, get inspired with it. So for example, oh, yeah. I mentioned earlier when I was like at the Ingressive, when we we're doing the developer groups for GitHub, a lot of people that were ambassadors then today are doing so well. Some of them are moved to AWS, some of them are moved to uh, Microsoft, and they are still part of the community giving back. And it's insane why, because this was just a program I was you know, planning out in my <laughs> in my bed or, or my desk, whatever, right? And some of the people yeah. that were impacted with this I don't know, program for a period of time. I've gone out to impact way more people uh, after that. Yeah. So it's like a cycle that just keeps churning out more talent. And I love you for that. That's yeah, awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I feel uh, like we like totally got off topic here. <laughs> do you want to do like our ad break and we'll come back and actually talk about Code Sandbox? It's like Sounds we've good. done this so long. Like we, we've, we've just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sounds folks, good. enjoy Storyblock. We know that creating content can be a tedious balancing act. Developers want flexibility to make seamless digital experiences, while content teams need the tools to work independently. We make changes and are left to watch everything fall apart. We met our limits using plugin after plugin and waiting weeks for edits. All for this. We knew it was time to rebuild the blocks. Storyblock gives marketers creative control and use a visual editor to actually see what they're doing. And developers are no longer restrained to a set of technology. Storyblock has made it simple for each market with localization and personalization tools. And allows you to publish content on all channels and all devices. Truthfully, we all wanted the same thing. To deliver the right information to the right destination at the right time. Awesome. Thank you, Storyblock, once again, for sponsoring Perfect Dad Dev. Uh, if you're just joining us, we just kind of got filled in all about the like the culture in Africa and like what's going on. But uh, what we kind of came here to talk about was Code Sandbox. So we're going to we're going to jump into a little more detail around the product itself. And uh, hopefully we get to learn just more about it and more about Ace as we go. So cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm running completely off our, our outline. So Britt, keep me on, keep me on track today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah. How does someone typically use code sandbox? I guess that's where we'll start and then we'll ask about some of the differences. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, the first thing that starts out is people creating sandboxes. Um, we have a ton of people that do this to create examples, to embed on their websites or to just, you know, share as quickly as possible with friends and colleagues. Um, I actually do have the numbers right now to tell you which one is the most used. <laughs> uh, but as that's what like as the typical user we tend to get. Um, also a lot of you know open source projects like React um, or other you know libraries also use code sandbox to serve mm -hmm. out examples like oh you want to you know quickly get into 
uh, figuring out how the library works, check out this sandbox to help you get started. And it makes a lot of sense because you know code sandbox is not just about the UI like CSS, uh, but more about you know full projects like Nox.js. That some of them require server side rendering, some of them require just you know front end um, development. Uh, so because of this ability to handle both the full front end and the back end, uh, code sandbox has come in really handy for a lot of these libraries to test out stuff easily. Um, just recently, we had a collaboration with GreenSock. Uh, where we worked with the community with some free GreenSock, li GreenSock libraries to do animation. And we had like submissions every week, which was pretty cool. People just coming out to try out different animations using their own libraries, uh, using so, GreenSock libraries, but on their own frameworks, right? So it was pretty is, cool. Are there like templates already set up with GreenSock installed? I love GreenSock. Like, it's, oh yeah, it's absolutely. Absolutely. That was, that was the, like the point of the entire challenge, just for people to discover yeah. that and see that like, these are the amazing things that you can build. And, I kid you know, there were a lot of amazing submissions. Uh, that I was like, wow, this is possible. Uh, we had people you know, join strokes with SVG, um, all, all of that, like making it very cool. Uh, they have so many some... plugins and crazy things that you can do with it. It's incredible. Right. So what it, what GreenSock did was they made like a trial version of all of their you know, paid premium libraries oh, available yep. on Code Sandbox. So even if you, you have not paid for it, you could actually build something out of Code Sandbox uh, and try it out with, with GreenSock. That's it was incredible. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah I, f I feel like that's how I got into Code Sandbox too, is when I was learning React and in the React ecosystem, it was one of the few places I felt like React yeah. kind of worked. <laughs> and <laughs> right. that leads kind of into my next question is what is different about Code Sandbox than some of the other ones people may know like CodePen or GitPod, StackBlitz? Oh yeah, like like I was going to say, especially with CodePen, um, I don't know if today you can, you can probably import like React or libraries in like the CDN. Uh, but mm -hmm. in most cases, Code Sandbox was initially built out to support React projects out of the box. It was specifically for React. Like, I want to be able to share React code or collaborate. Uh, but ever since then, it has grown to, of course, other libraries and, and the likes. Uh, but today, I think the, the biggest differences would be, especially with projects that we just released, would be the fact that Code Sandbox now, you know, you can work on Code Sandbox in your VS Code environment. Uh, so you have everything set up, all online cloud development, or you're using your local environment with with uh, VS Code, which is amazing, right? I think I'm using my extensions, but at the same time, I'm like in sync and I can share a link um, at any point in time. Um, our entire flow is very tied to GitHub as well. So you can do some a lot of open source stuff uh, where either your existing project uh, or an open source project that is public that you can access. And I have a very cool story with this, right? Um, I was on a, I was on a stream with Cassie um, from GreenSock about two months ago, and my MacBook crashed. Like I couldn't bring it back to life. It did not come on again, <laughs> so oh, it, was, no. it was insane. Yeah. I know, right? Um, but after that, I had to get like a, a Windows laptop just to use in the meantime, and I still had work to do. So all I did was just use projects basically, and throughout the entire time, I just imported the project from GitHub onto projects, and I was working. I had nothing set up on the laptop. There was no Git installed. There was no terminal. It was just my browser. And that is one of, that's one of my favorite things about the mobility and accessibility that CoSandbox projects now presents, right? You can build any size of project. I was working on CoSandbox in CoSandbox. <laughs> that's that how is I, amazing. I know, right? And all of that was happening in my browser on a Windows laptop that I had not set up anything on at all. So I feel like that's a great thing to point out that the accessibility yeah. of these platforms that are starting to be created are bringing it to a lower, like you could use a Chromebook or maybe even yeah. an iPad one day. I, I heard uh, Pauline from GitPod say that she was working on her iPhone on GitPod oh, one yeah. day. Well, it's like, that is just incredible that we can like bring these platforms to these different devices. Now we don't absolutely. need these big machines. <laughs> I mean, this is this is my iPad here, yeah? and this is Code Sandbox, like one you know. Oh, like, nice! <laughs> it is it is amazing. <laughs> the only thing I need is an external keyboard. I have to, I have to have like a physical keyboard. I can't. Yes, perfect. <laughs> it goes. <Scott. laughs> it definitely goes. Um, is is Code Sandbox? It's all web, or is there ability to like run Flutter or things like that? Um, it is mostly web, but now we support like Kubernetes, we support like um, Nix, where you can run custom like PHP or whatever the case is. Um, I think there's also, you can build Flutter on the web, right? I'm not 100% sure. Uh, so for that aspect, you would be able to develop stuff like the Uncle Sandbox, uh, but it's okay. primarily stuff for the web, yes. 
Cool. So, and does it use containers? Oh yeah, I mean we use VMs, um, and okay. we, we we do support like you can use Docker, Kubernetes, and Nix right now. Um, there is support for that out of the box. It, it is actually amazing. I, I can't even I can't even fully explain because it's like a lot of a lot of amazing people have built this project um, that have thought about how every single one of us um, try to build most times. So the integration to GitHub, for example, was intentional. I uh, was like, how do I currently work with GitHub? How can I integrate this to a flow that I can take with me anywhere? So I'm on the go. I can basically want to send a PR and I can do all of that and even include a link to build the branch in the PR when I submit it to GitHub, right? So it's all about that thought process, like how can we improve our collaboration, contributions, and also open source generally um, while staying as accessible and as fast as possible. It's, it's kind of interesting um, that we're talking about like the VM portion of that. Um, I, yeah. I think where Stack Black, Stack Blitz yes. <laughs> uh, di differentiates itself is with the uh, web containers well, that yeah. it runs. In. And I don't know if they'll be able to take it as far as you guys can, like with a full VM, Docker, like that that whole like setup, um, having a true server behind it. So it'll be, it'll be kind of curious. And I think that's, that's one thing I'm always thinking about in the back of my mind, like code sandbox feels like it can keep going. And I think yeah. maybe that stack blitz will run into a limitation. I like both. Don't get me wrong, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's interesting, like how Gitpod and like code sandbox have taken one Avenue where others yeah. are just kind of focusing on other regions. Um, are you, are you able to show us, uh, oh, our stream stickers are back. I got to kill that thing. Uh, I, I said that <laughs> earlier. Jeez, <laughs> oh, I thought I turned it off. Um, are you, are you able to, are you able to show us a uh, code sandbox and kind of just give us a, a tour around and maybe we can ask a few questions? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me, let me share my screen. I'm going to go to, um, let's see. Uh, do not hesitate to ask any questions. I'm here for that. <laughs> we did have one question, just if uh, Code Sandbox had plans to move to web containers versus spinning up Docker containers, which we kind of briefly talked about, but oh, yeah. I want to answer that more. Um, so I don't know if I communicated wrong. We are not necessarily like spinning up Docker containers right now, but we have support for them. Um, our technology is mostly built on Firecracker. Uh, I can share a link to a blog post that kind of explains it. Because uh, nice. I don't think I'll do a good job of that. <laughs> uh, well, so it's not like we are just like running on Docker. We use Firecracker to like um, the simplest terms to explain the technology based on how I understand it is being able to access VMs easily to disk. So there's like a faster um, process for moving code and also sharing stuff across branches and duplicating uh, to to kind of like represent the Git flow uh, compared to using web containers. Uh, so for us. Um, it's not a Docker approach. We support way more than that. Uh, it's, I think that would like, mm -hmm. yeah, that would describe it wrong. Let me let me share this in chat so that people can also check out oh, the perfect. blog post. Yeah, one second. I've I've officially shut off stream stickers. If we see it again, uh, I just let me know. But <laughs> <laughs> here we can throw on. Uh, oh, yeah, Aces I used to for gaming, so. Um, what you'll be seeing is my gamer tag <laughs> in chat. Nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, um, yeah, let me show you what what uh, what the new custom box looks like. Maybe, oh, right, maybe awesome. we'll do it this way for now. Nope. <laughs> I think it's just the orientation of your screen. Cool. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm using an ultra wide, so I just have to share the window. Right. Perfect. Perfect. Ah. Awesome. So this, this, I mean, this is what Cosmos currently looks like. You can start any project um, using these popular libraries, um, server side rendered, view, React, and the likes. Uh, but today, I would like to show us a project. Um, just announced the open beta, and you can see like the UX was well thought out. We just wanted to like make people as comfortable as possible, and also keep things as clean as possible. So you can, you know, have your own team, your own personal projects where you. Your, basically your private GitHub repository in most cases where you, you can have your internal projects here on Code Sandbox, but also link it to your personal account on GitHub or the teams that you're also a part of uh, here on Code Sandbox. Um, this is taking a minute to look because I think- Are, 
I, I assume with like the uh, the permission request, you can add oh, yeah. pr private re repositories and everything. Well, all of that, yeah, you can. So yeah. we'll would, would definitely ask for permissions when we yeah. do that, because yeah, um, yeah. for you to continue to build and for us to fully support um, open source project and even like projects generally, some of this will be private, right? So you need permissions to enable stuff like that to ensure that we can continue to be a part of um, support whatever it is that you're building. Um, so recently, I was actually doing a demo earlier. And I, I, I fucked um, the Ghost repository. So what we do here, this is the main branch, basically. Uh, it opens a new tab. So every branch has its own URL. So if I should take this link uh, and drop it right in chat, anyone can click on it and also just let me do that. I forgot to, oh, one sec. Then start messing up the oh. repository. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm going to explain what happens in that case. If you don't have everyone, right jump in there and just start <laughs> typing random numbers. <laughs> see what happens. So if you don't have right permission, for example, all you see is like it's protected. Like you can also open the link, but you can see like, everything that is happening, what I've set up, and yeah, it's protected here. So for you to make any changes, you would have to branch out. Uh, of the main repository, right? If you don't have right access, for example, or if it's a master branch. Um, so for, in this case, where we also have like a different URL for the branch, you can make changes, uh, send a PR right from here, make commits, everything all done through this. The entire open source and contribution flow is all done through code sandbox. So you don't have to worry about going back out. Um, all the branches are shareable by URL. So anyone you send a link to would come in and meet your exact development environment. So let's say you have your dev tools or you have, you have like different commands running at different times. When you share these links to them and they come in, they'll meet those dev tools running, right? So the links I shared in chat, for example, if you click on it, it's just going to be like, basically like you're visiting a web page, whereas it's a development environment that's running in the background. Uh, so it doesn't, it doesn't have to download node modules to your own server, your own browser locally. Everything has been running, uh, you no, know, as we went to. So this is Ghost, pretty cool. Um, I can make any change that I want here. We also have something we call interactive with me where you can run code from, um, from the readme file. Oh yeah, this is the markdown preview where I can then go back to change stuff. Uh, let's just do this. Uh, once that is saved, I can go through the open, like the pull request uh, flow. I can send in a PR, I can send a commit, everything just done to ease uh, the flow. So this is what I'm going to do here, right? Um, one second. I'm going it, to change this. Is is there a way since I'm playing around in here too? Can yeah. can I can I follow the files you're opening? Like oh, yeah. So if I share this branch with you, um, ah, okay. Because this is the branch I'm on right now. So if I share this branch mm. with you, um, you would appear. Let's 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 give that a go. <laughs> As I share the branch with you, you will literally appear on my screen here. And if you click on my name, you would basically go around with me. Let's do that. Ah, so yeah. just like VS yep. Code has. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Love it. Love it. This is sweet. See? <laughs> so like any, if I go to any different file, um, on, locally, once you click on my name, it shows that you're following me. Uh, let's see, like I can click here. You can see there's a green highlight around my browser. Um, that shows that I am trying to monitor the person that is in there. I like this. So yeah, uh, and then I can stop by just kicking it again. So anything I do, basically, you can we can both work on this together. Actually, if you have access to it. Um, I don't think you have right access, do you? <laughs> no, if, it's, if you it's read only. <laughs> right, but yeah. if you did, we can literally be working on the same branch at the same time. Um, and you just, do you understand? Like this is, this is your name, this is where you are, yeah. I'm assuming. Right, yeah, yeah. so we can literally, <laughs> For me, I see Cosmbox as a way to not only collaborate, but also teach each other where I have an issue and we can walk through all of this where I see we on a call with Zoom. We don't necessarily have to oh, share your screen. I am literally sharing my code with you in real time. So yeah. we can talk through stuff. We can fix bugs together. We can you know, send work on a PR together. Or oh, you're sending a PR code reviews. We can get in here together and talk through stuff. And I, it just kind of improves the entire process like one million times over. And I feel like that's, that, that changes the entire, you know, uh, dynamics of how people can collaborate and, you know, contribute to open source generally. And are, that are, eventually, 
Yeah, are you able to share like your server? Like I, in VS Code, I can share out the port and everything, and it'll show up on Brittany's screen. But we did that. Oh in yeah. Um, so this is a preview, right? I can share this. Uh, okay. Yep. Yeah. So this oh, can be shared publicly. Right um, yep, yep. Okay. You know what? This is this is Gatsby. So I'm just going to go back to I say Gatsby. That's Ghost. I'm going to go back to another project uh, where we have a, a preview that we're working on. Uh, let's let's try this Nox example. I think we're uh, gonna have to jump on one of these green socks with Jay <laughs> and like actually get some AJ crazy animations done. <laughs> You're right. So like I was explaining, this is the main branch. You most likely not work on this directly. Um, so you have like different branches that you can also um, work, move on to. And if I share this link again, we can come here together. There's a preview that is of course more user friendly than the ghost one that I was showing because that was just, um, I'll get back to this in a second too. So this is like Nox running. So I can share this preview with anyone. Um, the excuses of, oh, it works on my local host doesn't exist anymore. I can literally share this link. <laughs> I have an idea like, oh, it not only works on your system, it works on my system too. It works in the server, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> so a that great point. no longer exists, right? Um, and also, we've also like enabled, like we have a install, um, GitHub app where if I should create a pull request, it automatically links uh, the pull request to the uh, code sandbox uh, branch URL. So anyone that wants to review, thanks to this extension, this GitHub app, just comes straight in. So there's no, wow. you, don't have to, you don't have to like clone it locally and set up the entire thing for it to figure out, oh, this works or doesn't work. Just one click of the button, you are in a, in a development environment, set up for mm -hmm. that PR, and you know if it works or not. And, and I think that's game changing, right? Yeah. Totally. That's awesome. Nothing getting in the way. Like Brittany it's and I like, have had fights of like <laughs> Windows isn't working on this. And it's like, nope, it just works. Well, it's like deploy previews, but you have it like in an environment where you can just edit and change things. Like it's really right. nice. Right. Yeah. Um, so also on GitHub, let me share this quickly. Second. I was listening to a pod the other day and they're like talking about the history of the web and like talking about how uh, I think it's doing okay. We can talk around the world on video, share stuff yeah. like this. And now like we can interact on the code <laughs> we're working on too. Like it's just, it's mind blowing. It's I, I know, right? I know. So even for like a project like this that is on GitHub and if you ask like support for Code Sandbox projects, you can literally just open uh, that project directly in Code Sandbox. And doing that, Set up the entire environment for you, um, create the PR, install dependencies if necessary. And in most cases, if you don't have access, it's going to be like protected. And all you have to do is just branch out of it and you have your own copy, right? And you can create a PR from here as well. So let me, I think I was working on something here. So, like I said, I'm still on my Windows laptop, right? So <laughs> I have, I still have no local environment set up. So I've been updating my own personal website quite a bit. Let me show you. Um, and all of the updates I've been making recently have all been done on Code Sandbox. All of it. I have like a ton of projects here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have a ton of I have like a ton of PRs. I'm working on this article. Um, I'm also like editing different things. It manages all the branches for me. And the crazy yeah. part is I can send these branches separately to different people, and they get to see different environments or different changes that I've seen or I've set up for each branch, right? So I'm working on so many things at the same time and everyone can still assess it without having to set up any environment at all, all in their browser. It's like, That's I remember those days when you, right? When you have to like share the zip files of code, I'm literally changing the tech. I'm sending the link to different- I was literally yes. just doing that this morning. I created like three branches I wanted to deploy and I'm like, how am right. I gonna deploy each branch and see it? And I was like merging them. I'm like, I, I needed this this morning. <laughs> right. So, right. So this, really this, cool. this is my this is my um, personal website. A different branch where I was making some updates to like set up Twitter cards. Uh, so the preview looks good. And everything just runs here. Um, this is called Dev2. So it basically just sets up the preview for me. Uh, the preview, the dependencies are installed. Everything works like straight out of the box. This, this is my website. And I can share with everyone while not sharing my main website because it's still in development and everyone can just access it straight up like that. I feel like it makes, I know I work at Code Sandbox, right? But I use it and I feel so good <laughs> using it. <laughs> it's it's just, great when like you can use the product you're working on so well. It's just amazing. Yeah. Like you, you can talk about this all day, I can tell. I, I know, right? Cause I use it every day. Actually now that I don't have any development environment set up locally. 
uh, if I need to work on anything, I just project, project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you it's pretty chill for me. And you don't have to worry about your local environment. Like with Windows, I know there's always an issue. If you're not running WSL, sometimes you run into problems being in different yeah. envi environments and this just yeah. takes care of all of it. Takes care really of all nice. of it. Takes care of all of it. Um, you on an amazing. iPad, apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Finally, the iPad issue is solved. Yeah, right. so the code, the code Sandbox app is already integrated to projects. So everything I'm doing right here on the web, yeah, I can already do it on the Code Sandbox app, on iPad app as well. Wait, they have an app? It's not even a browser? No, no, it's, it is an app. It's an oh. app? Okay. What? It is an app, like, yeah, just, you just blew my mind. They have uh, a native like a, app. Oh, oh, see, I need I need my Twitch <laughs> command for the, the OMG or whatever. Okay, wait. Oh. So this is basically what I just showed you. So it's because I can't zoom in. Oh my god. Um, oh, we can't and, do it because the right. That's not... what, that's what I yeah. meant. Like I wish <laughs> we had. Is, as you can see, there's my icon. That's my avatar shade up on the branches I'm on. Uh, the iPad. Oh, hang on, hang on. Let me let me put you full screen. <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe. Oh wait, where did there you we go? Did again. Yeah, basically. Nice. So you can see my avatar right there, uh, showing that I am actually currently working on this branch. Let's see. It's a little. I know, cameras I, never there went, you go. There it yeah. Goes. yeah. So I can just click on any of this. Oops. Let's see. <laughs> and it loads up. Wow. That's really cool. They've put a lot so, of work into the that. Stream stickers yeah. just just came in so, again. Uh, if you can look at the top left, you see that uh, there's an icon that I'm on the browser and then an icon that I'm on the mobile. Oh, cool. You see that? Yeah. yeah. That's really oh, neat. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So yeah, that must so be has... recognizing the app, not necessarily the device type, <laughs> or maybe it is the device type. I don't know. I mean, we're currently on iOS right now, so Zaya is using the, um, you know, the iPad or the iPhone, or yeah, using the browser. So yeah, that's sweet. I love all of this. So like, I've I used know, right? Code Sandbox before, and I was like, yeah, it's cool. But I don't <laughs> think I don't think I'd use it as like a daily driver or anything like that. But the way this is, <laughs> I use it as a daily driver killing now. Me with the, with the <laughs> um, I. I think I might change over to it. I, like, it's so fascinating to me now. I oh, by it. all means, if you have yeah. any questions, I'm here to answer you. We're uh, so, uh, yeah. So first I want to ask, I'm going to start asking our guests this. This is going to be like my number one question. What <laughs> is your preferred code stack? Oh, oh. Um, it has evolved over the years. Um, mm -hmm. Recently, I used Nox, uh, just build on Nox, and uh, sometimes using a Laravel API. Um, but also recently, I also tried out Strapi, and I think that's amazing. So if like want to okay. get like, like I want to get like a quick MVP, I would most likely use Nox and the Strapi backend. I think that's like yep. perfect. Um, but currently, I'm working on an update uh, for the Made in Nigeria project, which is like an open source um, project <laughs> uh, that I'm maintaining. Uh, basically, what it does is it tries to highlight projects that are built by Nigerians that are open source, uh, but for like global use so anyone can use them it's not just about local stuff it's like yeah. you're in you're in america you're in europe you can use these projects right so it's like a repository for that and i'm trying to build up a new version for it and i'm using gatsby and chakra ui which is one of the things i shared for our peaks it's um, all over the place really, right so it's 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 a good um i think setup and i'm also using like if i cms for it uh just to undo the like the blogging aspect so that's like my most recent stack so, so I caught um, view and and react and all of that. Uh, is you're that right? Is that your front end preferred, or is there like anything svelte Ooh. in your future? <laughs> oh wait, are you are you like? Are we having so, breaking news here? No, I just asked. <laughs> oh, you're just asking for me. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I haven't tried. Uh, what's it called? Svelte recently. Svelte. Um, yeah. yeah. I was my, my go-to things for Brittany. My go-to is view. He doesn't even team. know what it's called. It's it's fine. Yeah, it's <laughs> all my days. It's totally fine. Oh, okay, I think totally I think I can I can I can you know redeem myself by showing you something. Um, can I share my screen again. Did you yeah, say absolutely. Netlify CMS? Sorry. Is that something you're using? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so I, know I was going to show you like that we have yeah uh, built kit here. So I'll try it recently. I'll try it. Oh soon. look. Okay. <laughs> I will try it very soon. So I've, I've, I've been, been trying, trying a lot it. lately. I oh, feel yeah. like it has a lot of similarities with Vue. You might find that you like it if you tried it. Yeah, I mean, it uses Vue. Vue. So. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Vue, but I'm just, I just want to try React again, especially with the project mm -hmm. uh, that I'm working on, just like, oh, yeah, I have, like, 
um, it refreshed memory of React because I've been using like the longest time and a lot has changed. I don't know what hooks are, <laughs> so I probably need to get oh, in on that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's a big well, change. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay, so the reason I asked that, uh, I was kind of curious like where a limitation starts to arise um, when you're going through that. So I think you were talking a lot about uh, SaaS products for the back end. And I work for a company that is Docker app, right? Which does like fully Docker containerized um, items. Is yeah. there, because you're running a VM and I assume you can go like full command line, like LS execute, whatever, whatever you want in there. Does it run like PHP? Does it run Docker? Like where where does it kind of leave off at some point? Yeah, um, I was just I was just gonna share a link to that actually. Um, let me see where is it. I love that James mm. isn't working anymore. He's everywhere. Hi, James. I know he was in my hello, stream James. This morning. Thank <laughs> you for the support, James. We love you. Oh boy, I had um. Shout out, learn, build, teach. I, pr I probably shouldn't say he isn't working. He's just doing different work. So, content um, creator is his new title, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, like, oh, we just go back from playing basketball. Hope you had fun, James. <laughs> Anyways, um, recently we actually had this question asked a lot in our community if people could work with like PHP, Laravel, and of course, the way to go with that is maybe like containers, right? Like Kubernetes or Docker. And it's one of these is why we now support this. Um, we support Docker and Nick. So, if you're able to set up a container, you can literally use any any language or any um, any stack that you would want to, uh, and just continue to run very well uh, in code sandbox. So we also have like Docker examples that we've set up. I don't know if that's accessible right now, um, but it's, I think it's, a, it's an ongoing work. We, we clearly support Docker and Nix right now, but it's something that we also constantly improve on uh, just so that people um, will be able to use not just JavaScript specific languages, but continue to build for the web regardless on code sandbox. I typed Docker it correctly. Docker compose file, sweet. I'm totally going to try that. Typed yeah. the link out for chat. <laughs> and it worked. It was, it was, yeah, it was. I had was no good. typos. <laughs> um, I'm yeah. not familiar with uh, Nix OS. Is that just another yeah. Linux, Unix? No, no, Nix? it is pretty or new. No? Oh, okay. um, I'm also not very familiar with it, but it's pretty new. And I think from conversations I've seen, it's going to change how fast we build uh, applications. It oh, it is, it is Linux. Button. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That's really neat. Right. I love it. Uh, this is this has been so enlightening. I, I definitely am going to be trying the product. Um, a couple more things that I had like typed out while we were talking here. Yeah. So we we went through uh, GitHub, and it seems like great, fantastic integrations there. Any Git repo work like GitLab, or I, I don't want to go through the whole list. Is it yeah? Is it fully I mean, supported? As of right now, we mostly support GitHub, but we okay. definitely hope to like. Um, support other, uh, I don't know, companies. <laughs> I'd upload <have to laughs> as soon as possible, yeah. I mean, that would, that okay. would basically just make uh, the entire process as easy as possible for people that use good sandbox. So regardless of where your code is or where you want to um, you know, host your, your repositories, we, we got you. So we're definitely looking forward to getting there. Sweet. So right now, we are in open beta. Everyone can try our projects today. All you have to do is just you know, head over to good sandbox, and it's right there go to projects. Uh, so you can have as much fun as I am having uh, using code sandbox projects for like literally everything I'm building these days. I even um, <laughs> right, even my new, uh, the new version of the project I'm working on, uh, it's a Gatsby project. I'm also running everything on code sandbox projects. Very cool. That's yeah. really neat. I, I love that as part of your like build <laughs> chain and like build process. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I just got totally distracted. I just banned straight stickers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's uninstalled. I could show you. Like, I don't know what's happening. Oh, oh yeah, I James. Think... I, I know what Kako Sandbox. I don't think we've uh, spoken in a while. <laughs> <laughs> this this is my 10th month at Sandbox, I think. Yeah, we were talking earlier that he's a DevRel and he knows what DevRel means now. And no, none of us know what DevRel means. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey we know yeah. like come on people are listening <laughs> we, we know what we're doing right we know i know what i'm doing sometimes. do not expose us like that <laughs> i i explained my job the other day and how much time i spent on twitter and they're like and you get paid and i'm like devrel yeah. is made up <laughs> yeah, it's right? totally made up it, it's like the best creation ever i i 
I have so I much know. fun. I definitely work way too much now, but it's such a, a fun it job is. to have that I can't yeah. get away from it. So my wife usually pulls me off and says, we're going for a walk. I'm like, okay, I can do that. <laughs> I mean, there's so much going on sometimes that you don't know what exactly you're doing. <laughs> And I, I am doing so many things. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> that is so true. And you work with so many different technologies that there's a yeah. new, can you, we stop making JavaScript frameworks, please? Nope. Don't. For my don't. sanity. <laughs> like, I mean, I mean, look at like bun and it's pushing the limits. Right? I want the like, next thing. Put the next thing that'll we, push the limits. Keep going. Do we need more? <laughs> uh, I have, I have a request, uh, or maybe it's a question. Um, for your meetups, is it open to virtually to like anyone? Do you want to drop some links and people can like join in? Yeah, like James great. probably wants to hang out with you later for sure. <laughs> um, <clears throat> let's see. No, no pressure now. If you so how do they work? Do they work? Are they local with in person, and then they also go out virtually? Like, what do you use? What services do you use for that? I mean, you kind of a little bit of both these days. Um, so the top. Conferences that come to it, we are like concatenate, which is I think that happens like in October. We've had like a lot of people speak. I'm not sure if James has spoken, but I think people like um, Sarah Jasna has spoken, um, Aaron Gustafsson has spoken, like a few people from different parts of the world have spoken virtually, and people are flooding as well. People like Teas, um, flew in just I think uh, for Open Source Africa Festival. I was in February, um, so these are like top top um, events that are happening. Uh, right now in in Lagos, um, but we also have like smaller ones where people like Python groups, Google developer groups, where they do like regular meetups, but also do like Dev Fest uh, around November. Uh, so that also grows like two thousand people. So for Dev Fest, we actually have people coming from different states, um, like all Google developer groups across Nigeria actually just coming. So it's usually like a very large number of people. And for Open Source Africa too, Open Source Africa now has like different chapters. So we have like chapters in different states across Nigeria and also outside Nigeria. And these people also fly in uh, to also be a part of this conference. So it's it's like, awesome. it, has, it has gone to a point where it's actually like a central hub uh, for technology, not just in Nigeria, but like for the most part of Africa uh, as well. Yeah, So I was gonna um, say, it's not even like one community that you can just share. Oh. It's just like everything and yeah, everyone so goes <laughs> to all of them. Right. So That's I think so if you go nice. to meetup, if you go to meetup.com right now, just search Lagos, you'll find like a ton of meetups. Um, but each of these other ones have their own specific websites that if you know now used to manage their scheduling, like a proper conference route, like in most cases. Like we, we not only have meetups, we actually have conferences now. And I think that's just amazing. Awesome. That that's is awesome. that's really cool. Uh, things have changed. Yeah. It's it's so great. Yeah. Be I mean, back in for, person. <laughs> for Open Source Africa, I think in February, uh, I gave a talk on the second day. Uh, on the third day, I wasn't feeling so well, so I just joined from YouTube. So, like, we've grown from just having 10 people um, attending meetups to being able to have, like, a ton of people and also stream live uh, what's happening at the event. So, for me, that was, like, a very proud moment as well, just just seeing everything grow and happen in real time. Ah, I love huge. that. And I yeah. feel like talking about things we love is probably time to transition to perfect <laughs> picks. Is that what you were about to do? I, w I was going to do one last personal okay, question. Okay, just ask a question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll I, give it to you. I, I'll allow I, it. Thank you. She's <laughs> moderating and hosting today. Thank you. For that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, so we booked a trip to Africa with our good friends um, for next year. We've been planning it for like three years to go on safari. Oh, wow. I need to know from you, and maybe, maybe you, look like you haven't gone on safari, but do you think I will get eaten by a lion? <laughs> What? That was my question. We're good. Go ahead. <laughs> do you think you're getting to my life? Yes. Do, do you really <laughs> think you're... Why? No. I'm totally kidding. It's going oh, I've I've gone... I'm, I'm guessing you're going to Kenya. Is that where you're going? Yep. yep. Yeah, I haven't gone yet, uh, but I have a lot of friends that have. Um, it is so much oh, and fun. they all came back. So I it's survived. Right. Like, your, right. chances are very, your chances are very high. I feel like you will survive. <laughs> oh, man. There's all these things you have to sign off on. It's like going I mean, skydiving. I'm like, okay, I guess. Oh, yeah. I mean, I went skydiving right. diving once, and I had to sign off on a lot of things. It was insane. Yeah. That's so, one. I, I don't think I could do skydiving. I can do skydiving. I, I, I can't do bungee cord because bungee cord, you get one chance. Skydiving, you get two. <laughs> It, I probably wouldn't die from doing that. It would be the heart attack that I have, like falling through the air. 
Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Abby, okay, Abby goes, I'm just gonna... she's, she's, she's switching us. Oh, yeah. We can't yeah, keep that's going. Dope. That's good. That's good. <laughs> All right. Perfect picks. <laughs> Ace, you're first with Crunchyroll. I love the name. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what this is? Oh, yeah. I was, I was actually sharing the series, Naruto itself. Uh, so I just linked oh. to Crunchyroll. Yeah. So I, Naruto, I, Naruto is. This is what opened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's Naruto over there. It's, oh, Naruto. No, okay. So Ace yeah. Ace was the first person that I've got the perfect picks to actually work correctly for in Notion. So I, so thank you for that. Going through that, yes. <laughs> I really appreciate it. And, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So Naruto is just an anime about a young kid that was ostracized, I think, uh, for being a uh, I don't know terrible disaster to society, but then just fought through all of that. Uh, and became loved by the community, grew very strong. Um, for me, it was one of the first animes I would watch. And what it did was basically just show how, even even in villains, like for villains, everybody has a story. And mm -hmm. depending on how you look at different things, you, you can make sense of how different perspectives uh, come into play. So till today, I see it's like a lot of quotes uh, on my day-to-day -day from Naruto, like, um, what is life? Sometimes we don't know what meaning of life. Like it's it's very like it's a cartoon, it's an anime, right? Like you can dismiss it, but they are, like they give a lot of you know very insightful chatter, and I really love it. I argue sometimes about it on Twitter too these days. <laughs> I mean, there's nine seasons, so you've got tons to watch. And I love a villain story because you get to see some of the backstory about maybe why they became a villain. And yeah, yeah. and then you start to be like, oh, I kind of get why you do that. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So next right. is Chakra UI, which I have heard lots of good things about. Yeah. So Chakra UI, like I said, I have a repository, an open source project on GitHub called Made in Nigeria. And Chakra UI is made in Nigeria. So I'm like so proud of it. It's like a, it's very popular these days. Like a lot of people use yeah. it, it has a lot of impact, right? I used to uh, use Chakra. It's great. Yeah. And I'm currently using it for, um, the new Made in Nigeria project. So I'm just like excited about it, like looking to build more stuff with it and talk about it more as well. So yeah. It hey, uses Sam. emotion under the hood and it's CSS and JS, right? Yeah, and I think I so. Yeah. About all of those things. Yeah. Okay. Did you have a yeah. guest you want to yeah, introduce? Yeah, I, I wanted to, I wanted to ask you <laughs> here, get your full shirt and back, back up a little bit. So it's what's, it's Demon Slayer. Have you checked this oh, out? Oh yeah. Yet? No, I haven't. He, but he I, I, I know about it. Yeah. I think it's, it's it's too graphic. He's like, why did you make me do this? Uh, I mean, anime, animes brain. are great. I'm sure he loves it. Sure. Animes are great. He's <laughs> like, I'm out of here. Thank I'm you. going. <laughs> he's the best kid. I mean, why? he's just self-sufficient. Why? He's just sitting there. Why? I know. He's angry with me now. I, I, have, the head, I have the headphones on for a reason. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right. So right. my first pick is centered.app, which is a way to stay focused. And I just downloaded it, which kind of stinks that I have to sign into this. I guess I'm going to sign That wasn't a good because... segue. I downloaded it. That stinks. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to sign into this just so you can see what I'm seeing. Oh, yeah. so Sel Selma was talking about this the other day. Right? Yeah. yeah so Flow with too. Jason is the one that I'm in. Uh. So my boss is Jason Lingsdorf, and I now have oh. Jason in my head telling me to complete task. And I feel like that's good motivation to like get my work done. So oh, that's um, so weird. How does this work? I didn't so realize there was a personalized version of start a yeah. flow. Like you pick a group, and then you start that group, and you start a flow. And Jason's now in my ear saying, "Want to get into the flow?" And then I have music that I can pick. <laughs> And it's it's a rainstorm, and I love it. And it's so soothing, oh. and it's like it's really meditative. And Cassidy has said nothing but great things about it. She has this freaking nerds group. Yeah, I mean, it was Cassidy talking about the other day. And there's yeah. also this Astro Lounge that Ben Holmes does, like a space astronaut. Like we have to have Ben on. It's really cool. And now I just have rain in my ears and i couldn't hear so i had to so that out, so but. do you pick the music or like do you yes yeah, the so there's like state? five five different music things that you can pick from let's see if i can go into my I, I love listening see. to like lo-fi music I, rain would bug me i'd have to look yeah, outside all there, the time there's like several ones and one, some of them were more like what, music and coach here it is so ambient atmosphere you can't hear them but i mean there's like different ones that you can pick from okay 
Cool. And you can I'll have to check it out. I, and the coach. Is, is this, is there a fee for this or no? It's free unless you want like specific stuff. So okay. I, don't, I don't know, billing and subscription. So there's this, if you want that stuff, but I'm on the free plan. All right. I'm checking right. it out. Yeah. So awesome. it, sounds, it does look very good. Yeah. yeah this and is this cool. is another new thing. I had to scramble for perfect picks today, but I, I feel like <laughs> these were good ones. Yabai is something I just installed two days ago on my Mac. And it is like, I don't even know what to compare it to because I use power toys on windows for window management and I can hold shift and just pop them into like predefined grid areas. But Yabai does it automatically so if you move a window like say i wanted to pull this over here that's power toys for me it will pop into that but Whoa. if i did that and i had something else on the screen like this it would just automatically resize them together to be next to each other oh that's handy i that's used divi <laughs> for all of it but that would be really cool i used rectangle before and it I just had like a few areas that it would go to but this like kind of resizes everything so you can see a little bit of all of the things on your window and it's kind of cool so if you have like yeah. four and you click can you like click one up to a corner does it do four corners <laughs> um so you have to install a separate app to do command shortcuts which is unfortunate you could make it do that by resizing and doing that. But oh, without wow. the keyboard shortcuts, I think you might be able to do it easier. You have like two perfect picks for me today. This is blowing my mind. Perfect, <laughs> right? perfect picks. Perfect. Perfect. Like yeah, I, I, this doesn't do a good job of it. There was a GIF, but I don't know what happened to it. But yeah, I, I like it. It's pretty good. All right. So, you want to uh, go? Here's, here's a little comment. I don't know if it makes sense or not, but. Fancy well, zones is the things that I was just showing you. So these are fancy zones that I've set up in Power Toys. And what did it say? You took it away before I could. Sorry. Read. Is the key binds for selecting a zone or a pane? Hmm. I don't know. I think I just set mine just up as shift. Too. Easy. <laughs> selecting not so easy. Uh, <laughs> so I, I set mine as shift and I hold shift and it pops them up. And you can see that oh. I have two zones on this monitor. Yeah, I would love to do four zones. So Divi I have set up and it's all I do is push up for full screen or the rest of them are one, two, three, four for left, right, bottom, right. Oh, that's, that's nice. Right. Yeah. My uh, 4K has six zones and I, I like that. I used to roll six. <laughs> <sighs> Too many windows. Um, okay. So uh, this, is, this is the terminal list without giving more away than hopefully what's up there. Uh, something really goes wrong for, for a SEAL team. And uh, I, I can't even say more than that because I'll, I'll give too much away. But um, as you know, when I try to give my reviews, this is definitely TVMA. Do not watch this with your kids. There's, there's a scene in there where a friend of mine even said, oh, that was too much for me. So there's, uh, there's a lot. No, definitely. But although you saw his T-shirt, he watches such graphic stuff. It's freaking. <laughs> <out>. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Chris Pratt. I mean, can't go wrong, right? I, I loved him more on Parks and Rec. I did but... not even realize that was Chris Pratt. I know it's a terrible cover. Uh, like I thought this was like an eighty. I can movie. see it like, now that oh. you said that, but I was like, <laughs> "What?" <laughs> terrible i'm like i if i would have seen just the photo i would have moved past never watched this it was like wow, interesting terrible. really I'm gonna have really to go good show them. though i i started watching it at uh like i think it was 11 p.m one night and i'm like trying to fall asleep went to bed at four woke up three <laughs> hours later and finished it i was just oh that my hooked. Goodness. it was Jeez. ridiculous yeah. awesome cool oh yeah my second right. pick i am Another new I'm, hot javascript framework yeah, so like I th I think they put a lot of thought into Remix, and I've read um, I've read the article that Ryan put out comparing not even comparing but just like stating the differences between Next.js and Remix and how they differ. And I've read that thing at Which least Ryan? ten times. Uh, Ryan Florence, sorry. Okay. And if if you just Google like Remix uh, versus Next.js, I'm sure it's probably the the top article. Um, but the other day, I'm totally forgetting the name now that we're live. Uh, <laughs> we've had him on the show. This is so embarrassing now. I, I have like Anthony in my name, and that's not the Facundo. Ac I'm posting all of these. Facundo is storyblock. Facundo, Facundo. There we go. So Facundo wrote something um, the other day about it. 
and it finally clicked for me and I was I got really excited and then James had James had Kat on to talk and I'm like oh like I'm starting to see the benefits of remix because the thing like you know Brittany that we hate about our site is it's statically driven that's the part that's amazing and fast and fantastic the hard part is I want to change something on there now we have to like revalidate or wait an hour or like because we have it set to an hour in Vercel. Remix will get on will demand build. builders with Netlify. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. sorry, I couldn't resist. I mean, you set yourself up. I, there. I hope they sponsor soon because I feel like I should be wearing a logo <laughs> of theirs or something. Um, but yeah, so what's really amazing about this is it's all SSR, uh, server side rendered, but it's on the edge. So you're getting nodes as close as possible to you. And I was like grilling Kent the other day on the stream, which by the way, we're having Kent C. Dodds uh, on in two weeks, something like that. Check the schedule, uh, comcat.dev slash schedule. Um, and he's going to kind of break it down even further for us in code. We're going to code 90 minutes together and really dive into this because I'm starting to really get used to why I think it's such a powerful tool. Uh, not to put Next down because Next has been great for us, but I've always said get as close to the user as possible and get it as fast as possible, which in my mind was always static, but it's kind of interesting how they're doing I don't think you this. need to do Remix for that, though. You could use Edge with lots of other frameworks. So I do like that Remix is trying to be framework agnostic now. I think yeah. they're working on yeah. some other routers to use other frameworks. But Yeah, because I, I think... They, no, I'm not going to say that. They they do or don't use V under the hood. Do you remember? I don't remember. Uh, oh, I feel like everyone is using they V. They don't. They don't use yeah. V. Okay. I'm Spelt writing a blog does, post and right? I just forgot because I had <laughs> I was playing with Felt today. Yeah. Um, so anyways, this is free. Uh, we will put the, the link out there if you are curious to run through it. I've started it. I haven't had time uh, for anything outside of learning all things AppRite. Um, so as we go, th as I go through this, I'll, I'll update people on kind of what's going on on Twitter, but go check it out. If, if you're even slightly interested, the first few yeah. I've watched, Kent, Kent uh, is always a fantastic teacher, but the, the remix piece to it itself, it's really intriguing. Um, still, I love the, t uh, TSX, TSX, what's the word I'm looking for? The react syntax. What, what is React. JSX? TSX. JSX, thank you. <laughs> but yeah, TSX is the TypeScript. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I love writing in that, but I hate state in React. So if I can solve that mystery in my brain, like I'll probably still love writing it this way. So there you go. There's there's my second pick. A hook. Go check it out. Yeah, I, <laughs> use effect is just hurting me. Every time I'm like, oh, shoot, I forgot something. Or I put an extra thing in the. Uh, you shot array yourself at in the, the foot. Bottom. That's like the big thing with use effect right now. Did I tell you about the talk? That's like use effect might be going away because it's such a. Yeah. I don't know if you told me about. it. I read an article on it though. But there was so, a talk I'm at curious. Reactathon or something on it. Yes, that's yeah. what it was. Yep. Cool. Well, David again, a oh, Ace even changed. See. He, he, he yes, got on, nice. He got on the bandwagon. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can hit Ace at Ace underscore KYD. That's D as in dog. Uh, go give him a follow. There's great stuff, and uh, I hope just to see more. And I hope to have you back on. You're so fantastic. Yeah, I'd love to. to. Check love to. those meetups. Check those meetups out. Yeah, we'll put those on the blog and everything else too. Yeah. Sweet. All right, awesome. everybody. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you. Yeah.